They come from all around the world to compete against the young Americans, and for good reason. For young open wheel stars of the future, these are a proving ground, a place to learn, a place to be noticed. This is the Star Mazda Championship. For these eager drivers, it's a giant step on the road to stardom, the Mazda Road to Indy. Welcome to St. Petersburg, Florida. Coverage of the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg here on the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. IndyCar star James Hinchcliffe will join me on the call in a couple of moments. Don Lewis has our coverage today down on Pitt Road. We focus today on the Star Mazda Championship, beginning a brand new season of doubleheader action here. The season champion wins a funded ride thanks to the Mazda Road to Indy. He'll move up to Indy Lights come 2013. Last year's champ, Tristan Vaudier, will compete in that series all season long. Star Mazda, a huge part of the Mazda Speed Driver Development Ladder. A lot of drivers would like to claim that funded ride for next year. One of the best of the best is 19-year-old Connor DiFilippi from California. They've been chasing him in the Mazda Speed Development Ladder system for quite some time time and he could be the guy who shows everybody the way home this weekend. Let's find out more. Connor Felipe begins his third season in Star Mazda. He's got more experience than many of his competitors and he's more determined than ever to take home the title. He proved that by easily scoring the pole for today's event. This is the start of it I tell you man. Uh, we've worked hard a lot over the off season here and uh, can't wait to thank the guys enough who put this car underneath me. It just it was all up in my hands. The car was perfect. And it was just a matter of me putting the lap together, and I was uh, fortunate enough to do so. And so I'd say it's a successful qualifying uh, for the first race of the season for uh, Team Junco's racing. Indeed, it might be his stablemates at the powerful Team Junco's who provide the greatest obstacles for DiFilippi this season. One is South American Martin Scuncio. He'll line up on the outside pole today. And then come the two Venezuelans, Bruno Poli and Diego Ferreira. Both of those youngsters race with help from IndyCar star EJ Viso. Now, Adrenny Autosport is back in force. They have last year's Rookie of the Year, Sage Karam. He'll line up alongside teammate Zach Veach. Veach also stepping up from the USF 2000 series. And one of the former champions in that series, Petri Suvanto, will compete for Team Pelfrey, along with promising young Brit Jack Hawksworth. They'll all be gunning for one man. And Todd spoke with him early. With our pole sitter, Connor DiFilippi, you have a kind of a target on your back heading into this, the first Star Mazda race of the year. What's your approach as you lead off from pole position? Yeah, you know, we uh, we had a great pole position start for today. Uh, Martin and my, my teammate Martin are going to be starting one, two. Really, it's just a matter of keeping my nose clean, especially in the first corner. We have a long season ahead of us, so it's just a matter of uh, finishing the race. Uh, so really right now, the plan is just to kind of set the pace early and and just get in the rhythm and I think there's bound to be a, a yellow flag or two so I really want to not push too hard in the beginning because I want to have good enough tires at the end to be able to defend my position so certainly uh, not pushing as hard as we can in the beginning but definitely want to set a, a strong pace to kind of test everyone else. Connor Felipe, be fast but be smart good luck. Thank you. Welcoming to the broadcast James Hinchcliffe good to see you as always a winner's worth of testing for these guys a lot of anticipation. Absolutely all this hard work of the offseason all the testing all comes down to this first race here. Everybody's eager to get going but we all know you got to get through turn one to really start your season off. For a lot of these young drivers James there is a tremendous amount on the line not just here but all season long the road to Indy will lead one of these drivers to Indy Lights. Absolutely and there's some good drivers lining up here. I particularly like the driver starting third Petri Savanto last year's F2000 champion. A lot of good experience in this kid and very very quick. All right these drivers are strapped in the visors are coming down. We're about to get the command to put the field in motion today at St. Petersburg. Drivers, start your Mazda engines. Gene Chris and from Garage Team Mazda, they are a big part of the Mazda Road to Indy. As the engines are about to fire, let's get some final words from the grid. Todd Lewis will have our coverage downstairs all season long. Guys, one thing we'll be watching for this race is the rear of the field. Sage Karam did not get in a qualifying time. Broke during practice, ruptured the gearbox. The team got him repaired for qualifying, but then it wouldn't shift properly. He'll be making a charge from the back row right from the start of this race. 
21 cars and drivers set to do battle on this St. Petersburg street course. James, show us around. Well, it's a tricky street circuit wreck, as they all are, but it's great for the drivers. There's a lot of passing opportunities down into turn one and down into turn 10, especially. Also, turn four. There's a technical section through the middle part of the track. It is a very, very difficult, challenging racetrack, and being the first of the season, it's going to be tough to see how these drivers get through it. It'll be very, very interesting here today. Very warm temperatures. Now, we're early in the season, but he could be a factor here. Connor DeFilippi, the quickest. He's on pole. Martin Scuzio will line up in the 22 car alongside. Row number two, Jack Hawksworth from Great Britain. Petri Savato. Those Pelfrey cars very quick in practice and qualify. Absolutely. The pace is there. Let's see if the experience is there to take these guys forward as the race moves on. Gabby Chavez is a driver you like a lot, too, right? Absolutely. A quick Colombian. Had some experience here in the U.S., then went over to Europe, and he's back to really prove himself on this Mazaro to Indy. And the young Mexican, Pedro Hida, in the JDC car should be quick as well. Ferreira and Bruno Pauli will make up the fourth row here. Back to row number five, young American Zach Beach. Zach Beach, obviously, for Andretti Autosport, starting alongside Gustavo Menendez. A couple of drivers will be watching closely. Stefan Radzinski and Ashley Freiberg from the Chicagoland area. Freiberg's got good backing, that true car sponsorship. It's a very exciting program, what they're doing. They've got female racers in all different forms of motorsports right now, so a huge opportunity for Ashley to prove her talent. Carlos Linares has been in the series for a couple of years. Zach Meyer, Jeremy Daniel, they'll start back at the eighth row. I'll take you back to row number nine, Camilo Schmidt, Andre Mendez, a couple of youngsters we hope to hear a lot from as we get going this season. We'll get back in deeper in the field here. Some of the drivers who had some problems, Larry Pegram, Walt Bolin, a couple of our, couple of our Masters competitors as the field comes to a stop for the standing start. And then at the back of the field, Sage Karam, a young American you know quite well. Yeah, again, another driver for Andretti Autosport, and he's very quick. He's won races is rookie of the year last year and he's out he's out to prove something he really thinks he's got the talent to be there he's got the car to win it and let's take a look at that car right now it's a carbon fiber chassis built to the strictest fia safety standards and only weighs 1300 pounds gearbox six speed sequential that means the drivers can hold their foot on the throttle and just pull back without lifting to get those gears goodyear eagle tires on this car provide a lot of grip they've got to last the entire race so you sometimes have to manage them a little bit the suspension adjustable sway bar is the most important bit here is that the front bar is adjustable from the cockpit. You can adjust it during the race. But most importantly, the 1.3 liter Mazda rotary engine, 260 horsepower, makes it fast but also super reliable. Mel Kemper from Spokane, Washington, uh, I think has the, uh, the record as far as I know. He did 10 years of racing, averaging 15 or 16 races per year. So about 150 races and never took the motor out of the car. At the end of the 10-year uh, run, he uh, took it out mostly because he had a guilty conscience. And the last race he ran before he took it out, he finished third on the oval at Phoenix. So these engines do provide a lot of horsepower, but they're also extremely reliable. Which is great from a racing point of view because yeah. you get a fast engine, but also an economic one. We know this isn't a cheap sport. Lights will go out on the right-hand side of your screen. These drivers will take off from a standing start. This puts a lot of extra pressure on the driver. The standing starts are one of the most tense moments as we see the lights start to build up, the pressure's on, the throttle's down, and you're waiting for that light to go out and that lightning-fast reaction time. Glad to have you with us. The Mazda Motorsports, our Star Mazda Championship, and we're underway at St. Petersburg, and DeFilippi in that green and white two-car trying to hold on to the lead into one. A very, very good start. Martin Scuzio making a good defensive move to the inside, and he'll hold second place through turn one. Everybody gets through one, three wide at times as they head to turn two. And this is not a corner you want to go <laughs> side by side. There's some great driving from these young drivers to get through everyone through those first couple corners. If you're Connor DeFilippi in that two-car, you got to like seeing a lot of scrambling in your mirrors as you all contact into the right hand. And that was a big move down the inside from Zach Veach. I'm not sure he even intended to make that move, but he sort of tried to make the best of it. A little bit of contact, but it looks like everybody got out okay as we ride on board now with Gabby Chavez. Our replay XD on board looks giving you some great video here as we head down one of the short straightaways at St. Pete. You can see Gabby taking his right hand off the wheel to shift, but he was also taking his left hand off the wheel. He's already making adjustments to that front sway bar we talked about in the opening, trying to adjust the handling of this car. Now, do you know after a couple of corners if you're not right? Well, what you do normally is you'll put your, your roll bar into a very, I guess, cautious position for the start and make sure that you're safe. And once the tires have a couple corners in them, a little bit of heat, you can start being a little bit more aggressive and really try to move forward. This 180-degree horseshoe right-hander that dumps you out of the front stretch here. One car headed down pit road already. DeFilippi built, trying to build that lead, but Scuzio staying right with him. The 77 car, he's lost his cowling. That's Veach. It's Veach after that contact down in turn four on that first lap. Obviously, he's a little bit of damage there. He's going to have to come in and try and get that fixed. And yet, Martin is absolutely hounding Connor DeFilippi 
Kipe is not letting him get away. Let's check in with Todd Lewis on pit road. Significant contact for the 77 of Zach Beach. The front wing is folded under. You can see that the top piece of bodywork on that Star Mazda machine has also been taken away on the impact. The crew will replace it as quickly as they can and then return Zach Beach to the race. What's important for Zach now is to remember to stay calm. He can still recover because what's important for everyone to know is that race two's results for qualifying, I should say, the grid will be set by your fastest lap in race one. So we can still set a fast lap as we set up the replay here. Whoa. Oh, gets into the back of the 15 car. That's Bruno Pali. That was actually pretty, pretty big contact. As we see the front, there you go. There goes the shot cover off and over. Hopefully no one behind him collected that. That's a bit of a scary moment for a driver. So Veach had to come to pit road immediately. We stay green otherwise here. Single foul racing on the front straightaway at St. Pete. Di Filippi with a good lead, but not a huge lead after a couple of laps. No, I mean, he's comfortable right now, but at the same time, he really cannot afford any mistakes. Cuncio's right on his bumper, and Jack Hawksworth is lurking back there as well in the Pelfrey car. I like what Hawksworth has shown us so far this weekend, a young driver from Great Britain. Not a lot of advance notice, but he's been very quick. He really has, you know, that the UK produces some very good racing drivers. That's no secret, and, and he's really living up to that pedigree. I think he'll be one to keep an eye on as the season goes on. So Zach Veach off pit road, the Zakosi Dana backup 77, uh, nose replaced on that car. They put the cowl back on. He loses an awful lot of time, though, in the exchange on pit road. Connor Filippi, the early leader at St. Petersburg. Scuncio trying to track him down. Then Jack Hawksworth, Gabi Chavez, Petri Suvanto were early in the going at St. Pete. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Coverage of the Star Mazda Championship alongside James Hitchcliffe, I'm Rick Benjamin. Tom Lewis has our coverage on pit road. Scoring strip top of your screen. Find out where your favorite driver is. Three laps on the board. Connor D. Filippi has led all the way so far, but he's getting a lot of pressure. He is. I mean, he may be in car number two, but this guy's been P1 all weekend long. Practice sessions, qualifying, even coming off the season open test at Barber as he ride on, bar on board now with his teammate, the man chasing him down in second place. The Pullman Brothers 22, Scuncio from Argentina. For Scuncio, how important is it to try to get up there and challenge Di Filippi early on here? You know, it is early in the race, and one of the important things, when you're the, the following driver, the car in front's in clean air, you want to make sure you're protecting your tires a little bit. You're going to be running in the dirty air, maybe you have a little bit more understeer, but you need to make sure that this car is there on the last lap, not so much the third or fourth lap. So I think for Scuncio, the play right now is Connor hasn't made any mistakes yet. Be close enough to capitalize if that happens, but not so close that you wear out your equipment before it really counts. There's uh, Petri Savanto in the 81 car, one of the Pelfrey cars. Those are the yellow entries there. This last corner, this horseshoe, this right-hander, that's got to be a great passing area. You know, it's, it's a great setup for a passing area, certainly. You come through that fast sort of 11-12 chicane into the final two corners. We see a pass attempt, ah. and no, he doesn't has none of it. Close the door, good clean racing there. But the key to that turn 14 is getting the power down, letting those Mazda engines rev up and get the speed up the front straight, because heading into turn one is no doubt the best passing opportunity on the racetrack. Action behind these cars, the 57 and the 15 doing battle. That's the teammates, Diego Ferreira, trying to get around the 15 of Bruno Pali to pick up a spot there in the early going. Yeah, and these two obviously close friends and both supported by EJ Visa, the IndyCar driver. So this is sort of the golden teammate rule here. You want to race each other hard. Oh. The 15 got out of shape. It looked like uh, the 15 car into the wall briefly. Holly a little sideways out of that last corner. And now a big opportunity. He's looking down the inside into turn 10. This is where you got to play nice, boys, and they do. They give each other lots of room, which is good, no doubt. Polly is uh, is looking at maybe having a little bit of damage on that car, maybe a little bit apprehensive right now until he feels it out. At the very least, he might have whitewalled one of those Goodyear's meet time Ferrero offline. And he's undoing all the hard work he just did, trying to get by his teammate. So Ferreira and Polly continue to battle for position. These drivers share something else. They are trying to climb the ladder, take advantage of the Mazda Road to Indy. They're getting some help from a guy you know, EJ Visa. Yeah, I know him well, fellow IndyCar driver. And it's great for these young up-and-coming drivers to have someone with some experience to bounce some ideas off of and, and really get to know as they go through some of the same struggles that he went through. You know, I know these two guys since they were kids, since they were doing go-karts. And uh, I just think they, the two of them are, uh, have a great potential, and I believe they have a very bright future. And, uh, you know, I think it's also something beautiful to give back to my country, some of my experience and knowledge, and help these two guys and, and come and join the, the road to Indy, which I really respect, and I think is, a, is a, something very smart. You know, he's so good driver. He has a lot of experience. F1, GP2, IndyCar, 
I think he's he's a, a very nice driver. He's coming from Venezuela too. I know I know him a long time ago. So we're like brothers, man. <laughs> EJ Viso establishing that team Viso Venezuela opportunity for Ferrera and for Bruno Pauli as they battle. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a tremendous thing to see uh, an IndyCar driver giving back to uh, not only his country, but young drivers in general. It's something that I think has been missing from the sport for a little while. So I really do commend EJ on what he's doing there. Ashley Freiberg and Sage Karam fighting it out for 10th. Couple of young American drivers. I'm excited about Ashley Freiberg. A lot of uh, anticipation uh, for another young American female driver to make her way up the ladder, the Mazda Road to Indy. And she's got some talent. She certainly does, and she is proving that. Running inside the top 10 in a competitive series like this, right now being hounded by Sage Karam who's on a charge after starting from the back of the grid but as you can see it's not easy for him he's having to work to get by Freiburg. Sage Karam in the 88 car dominant in USF 2000 a couple of seasons ago he's one of your Andretti Autosport teammates on the ladder system very quick young guy. He certainly is and I think growing up just down the street from the Andretti family in Nashville Pennsylvania probably influenced his career choice a little bit <laughs> he's good friends with the family obviously now drives for the team and and he has shown tremendous amounts of speed in his rookie year this is really a big opportunity for him to try and fight for the championship and try and get that scholarship to move up to Indy Lights. Take a look off the back end of that race car. Our replay XD cameras all over the circuit, all over these cars. A great look as he puts a lot of pressure on Freiburg. How cool is that camera angle? A good shot there into turn 10. A great passing wow. opportunity and very clean. Textbook stuff, but oh, a little loose on the exit. Sage is known for using every inch of the racetrack. When you set somebody up to make that kind of move to the inside, you got to make sure you can defend off the corner. Absolutely. And, and you know, he, he definitely had to fight for it. He's not pulling away yet. Ashley's still right there. So it's great battles all the way through the field. Sage Karam from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, completing that pass, coming down the front straightaway here at St. Petersburg. Another challenge for position here. Yeah, we see one of the Pelfrey cars. That's the 83 entry, Gustavo Menez. Menez is pardon me, against Bruno Pauli, who's, uh, you know, maybe still having a little bit of issue with that contact with some having with the wall outside turn eight. As durable as these cars are, as tough as these Goodyear radials are, when you whack the wall like that with the right rear corner of that car, that's got to upset the handling. At the, end, at the end of the day, Rick, these are race cars. These yeah. aren't army tanks. They're not really <laughs> built to hit the walls. And yeah, even a very slight tap like that can sometimes knock out the alignment and really what it does more than anything is it takes the confidence away from the driver to push for that last tenth of a second. Sometimes that makes him vulnerable like we're seeing here. Bruno Pauli there in the 15. He's got Sage Karam all over him in the 88 car. Karam on a charge. To come from the back of the field, as competitive as these Star Mazda events are, that really speaks, I think, to the caliber of driver that Sage Karam is. No doubt. I mean, he's one of the most aggressive guys in the field. And we saw last year he was very quick, but had a tendency to make a couple mistakes. So starting from the 22nd spot, as you see here, a little bit wide. Ah. That's going to hurt his challenge here into turn one. But he just, he so far has had a very, very composed race. He's pulling these passes off. He's taking his time but he's getting them done he's not wasting time eight laps on the board Connor De Filippi has led all the way so far here's Karam in the 88 putting pressure on the 15 of Bruno Pauli on that last corner on that horseshoe and that you think you certainly want to be at the bottom we've seen a lot of drivers having trouble holding their cars to the inside it's true it's such a long corner it's they, they actually call it two corners on the track map and in the car you sort of make it one long corner and when you're holding a corner for that sort of duration you're just punishing the front tires you're trying to keep the speed up but at the same time there's only so much grip you've got so it's a very delicate corner you've got to really balance the car through there and like we spoke about in the pre-race it's all about getting the power down there and trying to get a good run down the straightaway. Connor DiFilippi continues to lead but the Brent Jack Hawksworth and the yellow Pelfrey car starting to close in let's get on board with DiFilippi here. Flat out through the 11-12 chicane very brave stuff threading the needle into this turn 13-14 like we said he's patient he waits for the front end to come back puts the power down very smooth style from Connor DiFilippi. Gave me a good sense of what you were talking about. You've got to cut twice to get around that last it corner. It really is like two separate corners. All right, we're going to take a quick break here at St. Petersburg. We'll come right back with more of the Star Mazda Championship. Welcome back to the Mazda Motorsports Hour, the streets of St. Petersburg, the Star Mazda Championship with James Hinchcliffe, Heibrick Benjamin, Todd Lewis on pit road, Connor Filippi starting to stretch it out a little. Big pressure for second. And here they go side by side. Oh, that is very tight. Jack Hawksworth trying to get by Martin uh -oh. Spencio. Turn two is not a two by two corner at speed. And now there's another car coming into the mix. Gabby Chavez is smelling blood. Jack goes to defend. 
Now you can make one move to the inside like that, but the race stewards don't like it if you go back in the other direction. Exactly. Basically, oh, that is not a passing ah. corner, Gabby. Keep it together, man, as we're on board with them now. But yeah, the rule reads you can make one preemptive move to defend. You cannot react to the car behind you. So if you think he's got to run, you must make the first move. Now, if you're Chavez here and you're sitting back in fourth position, you're watching Hawksworth. He almost had second a moment ago. What are your thoughts? Well, from Gabby's point of view, he's got sort of two plays right here. Obviously, Hawksworth caught up too and was making that pass on Spoon Steel. He's maybe a little bit quicker right now. So Gabby could maybe sit back, let him try and set up that pass and follow him through. Likewise, if things go wrong, he's got to be there to capitalize ah. sort of like this. He's now got a good <laughs> run, but he's got the Pelfrey teammate of Hawksworth right on his gearbox. Now, normally, I would think you mentioned before setting up, using the last corner to set up your pass at the end of the front straight into one. As we take a look, Chavez looking to the inside here, but the turn two comes up so quickly. Can you do that? It's sometimes tough. It's a very difficult complex to set up for. And then, of course, you need the speed through two and three for this long run down turn four. And now Gabby's the one under pressure from Petri Savanto. And as we mentioned before, if you're the race leader, Di Filippi, you've got to like seeing this in your mirror. This is the best opportunity to just stop looking back, put your head down, and really try and open up that gap with all this scraping going on for second, third, fourth, fifth. All these guys are so preoccupied trying to pass, trying to defend, that it really gives Connor a huge opportunity to put a little bit of breathing room between him and the rest of the field. Di Filippi, of course, hoping this is his third year in Star Mazda. He's, whoa, trouble for Zach Meyer from Toronto. He goes around in the 66. He's in one of the runoff areas. Should be in a safe spot. There. Yeah, the Canadian from AIM Autosport here is just going to, good use of reverse. I know this, <laughs> this may sound like a silly comment, but racing drivers often struggle with reverse. But back to the action. Jack Hawksworth is caught back up to the gearbox of Scuncio. Another late dive down the inside. No, he might get it curve, out. Contact. Contact there. Scuncio, big sideways. Ah. I got to say, he was brave trying to hold on to that as he's loose now through turn two. That's Chavez on the outside of turn three. This is fantastic stuff. As competitive as Star Mazda is, you, you've got to pounce when you get the opportunity. Absolutely. There's no pit stops. There's no fuel strategy. Side by side now through turn five. Oh, great, great move there by Pedro Hita as they now snake their way through turn seven. Staying on board. The replay XD on board cameras there. Scuncio trying desperately to get back in rhythm and, and recapture some of that magic he had earlier. And that just hurts so much as a driver. All it takes is one guy to make a move, get you offline, off your rhythm, maybe some marbles on your tires, and he's lost three, four positions now. One of the Youth Coast drivers, Scuncio, a guy who's been at this quite a while as well, second or third season in Star Mazda. You've got to start picking it up at this point. He ran some good laps early but gets knocked off rhythm, and he's got some problems. Halfway being shown to the field this time by Di Filippi from pole has led all the way so far. And you can see what that fighting in the back has done for Connor. It's really just opened up that gap. Now, like I said, he can stop looking in his mirror. He can stop trying to figure out how far the guy behind him is. He'll let his crew back in the pits, radio him if they start catching him, but he needs to just keep his head forward, keep his head down, and really work on opening up and maintaining that gap. We've asked my broadcast partner, Mr. Hinchcliffe, to work pretty hard this weekend as well, taking a camera, meeting some drivers. Your teammate Jack's coming over here. Jack, what do you have to say about that little dance move you just saw there? Well, let's just say I hope he's better on the track than he's here. <laughs> and he's on the dance floor because I was pretty appalling. What is harder, driving a race car around a street circuit or writing a book? I'd have to say writing a book. We're not kidding, folks. This kid has actually already written a book. Tell him what the book was about. It's 99 things teens wish they knew before turning 16, and it's like a go-to guide for teenagers and even adults. You should read it. Yeah. You do wear underwear in the car, right? Yeah, yeah. I do have a lucky pair that I wear on race day, actually. Um, and I always get on the right side of the car. I always tighten my left belt last, and I always put my right glove on first. And I always scrub my feet before I get in the car, just in case there's some form of residue on them. I really like it, though, with the pink and everything. I think it looks good. You would look good with pink. You should try it. Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm very sensitive about this subject, <laughs> given my current sponsor and his, his previous driver. So he's the reason that you guys are racing in America. What did you say? What was the question? You, you come out of your native Finland, you're racing in the United States. Have you had to try and learn to maybe speak a little more and then interact with the, with the team and the fans and the other drivers? Well, honestly, I'm, a, I'm not the most typical Finn in, in that department. I, I think I speak a bit more, not as much as Gustavo, my teammate, though. I'm a Cali boy. I made to talk a lot. It's just where I'm from, and uh, 
It's a little bit awkward when you got by these quiet Europeans, man. They don't express it. The girls don't like it as much. I don't know. I think I think the girls dig the English accent, though. Am I right? Uh -huh. I think so. I mean, the Californian guys, they just can't talk properly, you know? I mean, like, we speak proper English, people like that, and, you know, this guy's got so much slack. It's unbelievable. They use words like hella. I mean, I've never seen that in a dictionary. I don't do that. It's just all about dude and brah and, you know, rocking that with the man tops, <laughs> flip flops. That's where we're at. <laughs> Apparently, this is why I will never fit in in California. You know, I had so much fun meeting these guys, some great personalities, not only talented drivers, but great characters. The future of this sport is very bright indeed. Looking forward to meeting these kids as we go through the season here on the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Mazda Road to Indy in St. Petersburg, Florida to kick off the 2012 season. Welcome back to the Mazda Motorsports Hour. These young drivers meeting their fans, getting to know people. This is an important part of driver development, isn't it? It's actually getting them a great taste of being celebrity racing drivers, which is what they're all trying to do. But it is now back to the on-track action, and oh. that does not look good. Carlos Linares in trouble going down into turn one on the 20. Running 12th, there's contact, and he goes around, breaks something on the front end. Yeah, that was a very ambitious move. Locked up the fronts, move on uh, Bruno Pauli, who saw that little brush with the wall earlier. So that's going to be, obviously, terminal damage to that car. He will not be able to continue. At least the local yellow, if not a full course. Ryan Tavider here in the 33, going around down into the runoff area. One of the GDT uh, drivers. He'll turn and try to rejoin the field. We stay green elsewhere yeah not sure what what caused that it seemed like he had enough time to come up on the uh, on the incident there but yeah the the green flag staying out avoiding that full course caution definitely welcome news for Kennedy Felipe you never want to see that yellow flag come out when you're the guy leading the race Victor Subanto in the 81 trying to track down Juan Pedro Hita in the nine car as they battle through the back portions of the road course here St. Petersburg Street Circuit this is a beautiful racetrack but very impressed with the facility here it's just gorgeous, you know, it's got the waterfront, it's very scenic, but it's also a great event. There's a lot of people, a lot of activities going on over the weekend. It's it's one of the favorites of the drivers, and it's, it's a great place to sort of, you know, get the season going. Working on lap number 16, this is a battle for third, oh. fourth, and fifth, and Polly goes around. Definitely, probably some damage from that contact he had, the second bit of contact that he's had, a nice impressive little spin wow. there to get things going. I'm not sure if we kept the engine running there. Looks like you might have had to refire it. These Star Master cars, they do have onboard starters, so if you stall it, you can get going again, as he's done. No very significant damage to be seen. Maybe he just lost it. Yeah, yeah, a little bit loose. Man, lucky not to hit the wall there. Now, again, this is the car that made contact with the wall earlier, so he could have a little bit of a tire issue. All of this benefiting De Filippi in the mod space two car. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he, that was a very lucky spin from Bruno Pauli, not only to not hit the wall, but then to not be collected. You saw there were a couple cars came screaming around turn seven there right after him. But a good gap now back to Jack Hawksworth as we see the 66 car just leaving pit lane. It is a, you know, it's a decent gap, but you never know. They're still racing further back, and there's still a couple of laps to go before uh, before this one's wrapped up. Zach Meyer in some trouble. He spun earlier. Let's get on board with Juan Pedro Hita, who continues to run smoothly. Quickly downstairs to Todd Lewis for an update. That's the source of the problem for the 66 of Zach Meyer. The uh, AIM Autosport driver didn't realize he had a flat tire. That's Keith Willis looking it over right now. That's why he kept having so much trouble on course. He was running consistent times up until that tire issue popped up, fellas. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. You can't see any big flat spots or any big cuts. So it's, it's rare to have a tire go down. These Goodyears are obviously very good tires. You may have picked up some debris. You know, maybe it didn't look like he hit the wall because there was no marks on the side of the tire. So bizarre, very sort of rare problem there for Zach Meyer. Very unfortunate. This battle for fourth continues to rage. Pedro Hita in the blue nine car and the 81 of Petri Savanto, one of the Pelfrey cars. They've been nose to tail most of the day. You know, and Savanto's really impressed me, not only on track, but also off track. I enjoyed speaking with him, getting to know him. He's one of those cool, collected calm racing drivers very typical of the finish and he just it, it's a kind of mentality and demeanor you really want in the race car you want to stay calm under pressure and this is a great moment here he's got a great run as we head through the kink maybe a good dive down into turn 10 he pulls out and yeah oh oh good defense from Petra Hita out broke him on the outside had the good brake zone the good rubber and that that's a tough move to pull off to keep someone behind you there Back on board with Pedro Hita, the replay XD onboard cameras into the final turn, the horseshoe. But as you mentioned earlier, James Hinchcliffe, got to cut that wheel twice to be in good shape for the front stretch. Yeah, you can even see in the middle of the corner, great onboard footage that we're getting there. And you can see some of the, the, the buildup on the inside of the tire. You know that's adding to understeer. 
Now, this is the kickoff of the 2012 season from the Mazda Road to Indy, the Star Mazda Championship. It's part of the Mazda Road to Indy Driver Development Program, the USF 2000 Championship. That driver, that champion, will get an opportunity to run Star Mazda next year. Our Star Mazda champion this season will move on to Firestone Indy Lights next year. The Indy Lights champ James may be racing against you every week next season. And it's just such a cool ladder system. Never before has there been such a defined path where the champions got to move forward. It's great that Mazda stepped up to the plate to help develop young talent in this country. Now, the Skip Barber Racing School has become the official racing school of the Eyes Eyed Indy Car Series, the Mazda Road to Indy, and the Skip Barber Indy Car Academy is officially created. The names that have uh, entered the Eyes on IndyCar series who've come through this system, uh, big ones, Hinchcliffe, Ray Hall, Andretti, Di Silvestro. Uh, so that's part of the reason we're doing this. Uh, those young drivers represent uh, what the Mazda brand is all about. Plus our engines are in the back of the car. Uh, the uh, two-liter MZR four-cylinder in the Renesis rotary engine, they represent our production-based engines. The partnership with Skip Barber has uh, been several years now. Uh, they've had a great karting shootout, but now an announcement like the Skip Barber IndyCar Academy blows the lid off of it. Uh, we stop talking to ourselves and we open this up to the mainstream, showing people that there still is a chance uh, to make it all the way to the top. Mazda's involvement in motorsports is just incredible, and so much of it's come straight from that man, John Dune, and it's just awesome to see what they're doing for racing all over the world. Part of the action this weekend at St. Petersburg, Cooper Tires presents the USF 2000 Championship powered by Mazda. Show you some highlights here. There were five wide at times, James. And that's one of the brilliant things about this series. Smaller cars gives you more room, and Spencer Piggott on the outside of turn one to take the lead in a great, very well-calculated move. And trouble right here. Three cars involved early on. Some heavy contact, a lot of parts scattered. 38 car among those in trouble. Everybody's okay on the restart. Piggott and Matthew Brabham battling. And look at this, all the way down to the wall. He could have tried to go outside. Ah. He went for the far inside. It didn't quite work out. More action behind them as well. On the outside, in move. Piggott able to get back by Matthew Brabham. He picks up the win in the fourth round of the season for the USF 2000 National Championship. Uh, Cooper Tires presenting. Mazda powering. We'll have coverage of USF 2000 all season long. Back to our action, Ashley Freiberg, Stefan Rosinski as they fight it out for ninth here in the closing laps. Yeah, there's battles all over the racetrack. Nobody's giving up here as we see another one. It's still Petri Savanto trying to push the number nine JDC entry, and it's it, these guys have been going at it almost the entire race. Juan Pedro Hita in the Petrosur car holding on to that position. I'll tell you, if I'm driving the 81, if I'm Savanto, I gotta be pretty frustrated by now. Definitely, I mean, there's no doubt with how close he's been running on the back of Petro Hita, he's got more pace, just has not been able to pull the pass off. We saw that one close attempt into turn 10, which we're about to ride on board with Petro Hita into. Here we go through turn nine but uh, a good defensive move on the outside for Petra Hita. So there's no doubt there's more speed in the 81 car right now. He just hasn't been able to show it. Now, if you're Suvanto, how frustrated are you? I mean, you're frustrated, but at the same time as a driver, this is part of racing. If you've got the faster car, you've got to find your way by. If anything, I'm very impressed by the cool drive that Petra Hita's given. He's had pressure for a bunch of laps in a row now, a very quick driver and a very quick car, but he has not succumbed to it, and he's kept him behind him, and that's a big challenge as well. Fourth and fifth in the running order. Connor DiFilippi continues to lead. Jack Hawksworth runs second. Gabby Chavez is third, and here's that fight again for fourth. They're going to battle now through turn one and two. Maybe Savanto's close enough to get the draft down into turn four, but it's still smooth sailing up front for Connor DiFilippi, although Jack Hawksworth may be closing the door, or closing the gap, I should say, a little bit as, oh, Savanto so close, but just not quite there. He's definitely knows he's running out of time. Now you battled some of this, I would think, in IndyCar, James. You've got very similar power, same tires, kind of the same chassis to work with. It's all about setup and anticipation and things like that. It is, and the big difference that we have in the IndyCar series is we have races that are four or five times as long. We have pit stops, fuel strategy, tire strategy. If you can't get by a car on track, you can be creative and find other ways to end up ahead of them at some point. In these junior formula, these are all sprint races. It is flat out from, from the green flag to the checkered flag, and, and you don't have those opportunities. So it puts an emphasis on racecraft, and it puts an emphasis on trying to get these passes done. Connor DiFilippi continuing to add to his lead ever so slightly, lap by lap, and, and sometimes it's a matter of adding a foot to your lead, not a car lead. And that just shows how competitive this series really is. You've got two different drivers in different teams, but they are still running almost identical lap times. And as you say, it can be hundreds or even thousands of a second difference over the course of an entire lap. 
I board here with Connor DiPhilippi. Be plenty of open race track in front. You like that as a driver? You do, but you can see the car is struggling a little bit. He's maybe running out of some tire grip as we check in on Zach Veach, who's up to 17th after his problem on that first lap and that nose change. Got to be tough. He's got that cow piece missing there, so aerodynamically he's not as fast probably as he'd like to be. And you lose eight spots in the season opener. Frustrating way to start the year. Yeah, certainly. You know, he's, he's a sitting duck on the straightaways with that big aerodynamic disadvantage, missing that shot cover up front. But he's making the best of it. I mean, what Zach really needed was a yellow flag, a caution, full course caution to try and bring the field back together and maybe give him a chance to make a couple more moves. But ultimately, that didn't fall for him. And you can see the frustration on team owner Michael Andretti's face. Camilo Schmidt there on the 21, one of the other Linares entries. Carlos Linares driving their lead car. Uh, he's had an interesting day as well. Schmidt in the 21, just learning here. They, you know, for some of these drivers, if this is your first year in star, and this used to be maybe a one-year stopping point. Now it might be that you need to run two or even three seasons in these cars. Well, ex exactly. Connor DiFilippi's in his third season. You know, what's, what's so cool about this Mazda Road to Indy now is it, can, it convinces drivers to stay long enough to try and win that championship. It stops these guys moving up too quickly, which for so many years we saw happening. And guys' careers were almost being ruined by getting too far too soon. So Connor comes back and realizes that, hey, if I win this championship, I get ushered into a competitive Indy Lights ride, and that's what he's trying to do. So a very good... Uh, very good system there. Walt Boland leading the expert series standings, the Tampa Bay Jaw Surgery 23 car. And one of the cool things I think about Star Mazda, that you don't have to be 17 or 18 years old to get out here, compete, enjoy the speed and the performance of these Star Mazda automobiles. Yeah, it really does just open the field up for a lot of guys to come here and enjoy and race. And, and like you say, I mean, these guys are still competitive drivers, even though they're a little bit older than these young guys up front. Hawksworth in that yellow Pelfrey car trying to track down the race leader. Hawksworth in the 82, the RKM machine. How hard is it for a driver from Great Britain to come to the States and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stake my future and my fortune here. How hard is that? That's a big decision to make. You know, I remember I had to make a similar decision when I had an offer to go over to Europe. And it's, do I stay in the US and Canada and try and run over in North America or do you try and make it over in Europe? And it's a big decision to make because you really have to stick with one. We see Gabby Chavez did some back and forth and it maybe has held him up a little bit. He should be a little bit higher in a bigger car than he is for his age. But Jack's made this move early. He's committed to it. And, and so far, I mean, so good. The, the kid is running very well. You make that you make that commitment to one side or the other in this. You, you say, I want to go to Indianapolis. I want to be an IndyCar star, or I want to go to Europe and maybe try and see if maybe I can get lucky and get the Formula One. That's a tough one. It is, and, and one of the biggest things about making that commitment and standing to it is you run on all the same tracks. You run with the same sort of rules. And as you move up to different cars, having that track knowledge is a big part. I mean, when these kids graduate up to Indy Lights, they'll come to St. Petersburg, and they'll know the only difference for them will be the car. The track will be the same. The rules will be similar. And that, that consistency really helps drivers develop. And Team Pelfrey, they have been an IndyCar entrant. They participated in USF 2000 as well. As Indy Lights, you get known in the paddock area. You do. It's, it's good to have that reputation and seeing these teams that have teams at, at all the different levels of the uh, of the road to India. I think Andretti Autosport, maybe a little biasly, one of the greatest <laughs> examples of that with the two-liter program, the Star Mazda's Indy Lights, and of course the IndyCar program as well. All right, the leaders in some lap traffic now. They saw the white flag last time by. Filippi being pressured here by Jack Hawksworth. Hawksworth knows he's got to get it done this time by. You can see the two very conflicting mindsets, the nervous faces of the, the Team Junkos guys, but the two conflicting mindsets. You've got the leader trying to be cautious, doesn't want to make any mistakes. You've got that guy running second, very hungry, trying to capitalize on any weakness or chink in the armor that they see. So this is uh, this is really coming down to the wire now. That lap car is not what Connor DiFilippi wanted to see. A little look from Jack Hawksworth, not quite close enough. He's just trying to fill the mirrors of DiFilippi, maybe get him a bit nervous. Gabby Chavez has moved to third in the 19 car. DiFilippi trying to go wire to wire, a couple of corners from home here at St. Pete. And a big oh. lockup from Hawksworth nearly hits wow. DiFilippi. I bet Connor had no idea how close he was to catastrophe there, but that gives him a clean run off the last corner. The checkered flag is waving, and that is all she wrote for Connor DiFilippi. Lights to checkered. Jack Hawksworth tried to dive bomb him on the final lap. They are happy on pit road here. And Connor DiFilippi from San Clemente, California, gets the victory in the season open. And big high five from Connor Daly, who drove that car to the championship a few years ago. And yeah, that was a, that was a great drive pressure at the end, but he showed his maturity, showed his experience, not letting it get to him and coming away with the win. Jack Hawksworth rolled the dice there in the final quarter. Could have been disastrous for both those drivers. Yeah, it could have been, but you know what? It wasn't. It's, a, it's not going to be remembered as the almost miss. It was a guy who was very aggressive. He was going for it, but at the end of the day, he kept control and he brought home a strong second place for his first race. So 
Connor DeFilippi from San Clemente, California, leads wire to wire at St. Petersburg. Hawksworth has to settle for second. Chavez takes third in the Mazda Road to Indy. Helmets off. Hans device is off. Connor DeFilippi is happy to celebrate win number one. When we talked earlier this weekend, you said you were on a mission this year, so this is the first step in that process, I guess. Yeah, it was uh, it was a tough race. There was It was all green, and we really had to push hard throughout the whole time, so uh, my Yunko car was really hooked up, and towards the end, we got a little bit loose, so we're going to have to kind of make a few adjustments for tomorrow, but overall, we got the win, and I can't thank Mod Space Motorsports and, uh, you know, Hunko's Racing and Justice Brothers and Oakley and Sparko and all my sponsors that have made me uh, eligible to put me up into the car this year because uh, just a few weeks ago I wasn't even sure if I was going to drive a car. So thanks to them for, for stepping up and supporting me. Great start to the season for Connor DeFilippi, winner of race number one. You get the feeling it won't be long before we see Connor DeFilippi in Indy Lights and elsewhere as he moves up the Mazda Road to Indy Ladder. Hawksworth second, Chavez, Pedrojita, Petri Savanto. Pretty impressive for all five of those drivers. Yeah, absolutely. And then further down, Martin Scunzio, not the results he wanted starting on the front row. Zach Veach, you see, only made it up to 17th. Like we said, really needed that yellow flag. But some good racing up and down the field all race long. All right, the rest of your running order there. Let's get the thoughts of the driver who had to settle for second. Jack Hawksworth comes away with a podium finish, second in race number one of the Star Mazda Series. Really tried to challenge Connor near the end of this one. Yeah, no, we had an awesome car from start to finish in that, and uh, you say we got very close at the end. I think we uh, a couple more laps and maybe we could have had a go, but, you know, it's easy to say that. But, you know, awesome job from uh, Team Pelfrey. Um, you know, massive thank you to, to Dale and everybody there. Well done. My engineer made a, you know, Green car for me and everybody did an awesome job so it's a you know, happy days all around really at the minute. Thank you. All right, the thoughts of young Jack Hawksworth, very aggressive. Now, next week on the Mazda Motorsports Hour, we'll have coverage of the USF 2000 Championship powered by Mazda. Cooper Tires, of course, heavily involved as well. Lots of contact and lots of action in the streets of St. Pete. It's always a great series. It's great to see these young drivers sort of cutting their teeth and getting a feel for open-wheel racing cars for the first time. Lots to talk about when we bring you coverage of the Cooper Tires presents the USF 2000 Championship powered by Mazda. And then in two weeks, we'll take you back to Barber Motorsports Park, just outside Birmingham. Alabama. James, I know that's a place you like quite a bit. It's a favorite track for the drivers. So much fun to drive around, but also produces some great racing because of the massive tire degradation we see here. So definitely expecting some great on-track action. Star Mazda action from Barber. That's coming your way in two weeks on the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Meantime, Todd Lewis has caught up with our third place finisher. Gabby Chavez winds up on the podium in race number one of the Star Mazda series. What a satisfying day this must be. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's uh, it's my first time in the U.S. Uh, since uh, 09, so I'm really happy to be back. First time in this car. Uh, I've only had two days of testing, and the whole time we've just been improving and improving, and what a great start to the season. Congratulations. Thank you. Gabby's shown speed early in his career when he was over in Europe, so it's no surprise that he's here and doing well so early with so little experience in this car. We're looking forward to seeing how he progresses through the course of the season as well. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the Star Mazda season opener on the streets of St. Petersburg. A wire-to-wire -wire win for Connor DiFilippi. He's got a lot of competitive drivers and teams who will be giving him fits, we know, throughout the course of the season. It's been a lot of fun. More to come all season long on the Mazda Motorsports Hour. For Tom Lewis, James Hinchcliffe, Ivory Benjamin, join us next week. Thanks for watching the Mazda Motorsports Hour.